as we're solving differential equations, it's nice if we can separate the variables and integrate both sides. However, sometimes both sides don't separate very nicely. And so another way we can attack it is if we can identify the equation to be a linear equation, we can apply a slightly different strategy to allow us to integrate both sides. The question for today is how do we solve linear equations, specifically linear first ordered uh, differential equations. We're going to solve uh, second ordered linear equations in another video. But for now, let's look at how we can identify a linear first ordered differential equation. A linear differential first ordered equation is of the form y prime plus p of x times y equals q of x. And what's really important in that format is it's a first derivative. The p of x part has only x's in it. The y has no exponents. That's what makes it linear. And the q of x part has only x's in it. If that's the case, we have what's called a linear first order differential equation. And then we can look at how to develop a process to solve these equations. And what's interesting, even though it seems odd at first, these equations become very simple if we multiply both sides by e raised to the integral of p of x dx. That integral is just all in the exponent. And look what happens when we do that. So originally, we had y prime plus p of x times y equals q of x. This is going to look weird at first, but it's neat how this is going to all come together. I'm going to multiply the whole thing, both sides, by e to the integral of p of x dx. And when I do, distributing it through to all three parts, we get e to the integral of p of x dx y prime. Distributing on the second part, we get e to the integral of p of x dx times the p of x times y is equal to the q of x times e to the integral of p of x dx. And this is very useful. It's not really obvious why until we take a quick look at what if I took y times e to the integral of p of x dx and took its derivative. Well, what's neat about this derivative is it's a product rule. We have y times e to the stuff. The product rule says we can take the derivative of the first, which is y prime, times the other stuff, which is e to the integral of p of x dx. And then we add the derivative of the second part. Well, the derivative of e to the stuff is e to the stuff, e to the integral of p of x dx, times the derivative of that inside stuff. Well, the derivative of the integral is just p of x times the first part, which is y. Notice. That is exactly what we have on the left side of the equation. That means the left side of the equation can be written as, and I'm just going to switch the order. I'm going to put e to the integral of p of x dx on the left times y. Its derivative is equal to q of x e to the integral of p of x dx. Now that I've got a derivative on the left side, I can integrate it dx. And I can integrate the right side dx. And that's going to give me, because the derivative's integral is just the inside stuff, e to the integral of p of x dx, y is equal to the integral of q of x e to the integral of p of x dx all of that dx. 
And then all I have to do to finish solving is divide by that e, because now I no longer have a y prime. And so y is equal to the integral of q of x e to the integral of p of x dx dx divided by e to the integral of p of x dx. And by walking through this process, we were able to solve this linear equation for y. What made it all work is at the beginning, we multiplied by this e to the integral of p of x dx. We call that the integrating factor. If we multiply by that integrating factor, it makes it into something that's easy to solve. I do not suggest you memorize this formula. It's ugly and is actually not worth the time to memorize, because it's easier just to work through a process that accomplishes those steps. The first thing we want to do is make sure we get the equation in the correct linear form, y prime plus the p of x times y equals q of x form. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to find out what the integral of p of x dx is. It comes from the middle, the integral of that middle piece. Then we will multiply both sides by e to the integral of p of x dx. Basically, what we found in part b, that becomes the exponent on e. What's nice when we multiply both sides by that, we don't actually do the multiplication on the left side, because the left side will become e to the integral of p of x dx times y with a derivative. That will allow us to integrate and solve the resulting equation. If we have a linear equation, this process will work to solve every single time. Let's look at some examples. Let's say we have y prime plus 4y equals 2x e to the negative 4x. We've already got it in the correct form, so now we're ready to find the integrating factor by integrating the p of x. That's the part in front of the y. The integral of 4 dx is equal to 4x. That becomes the exponent on my e. e to the 4x is my integrating factor. So we're going to multiply both sides by e to the 4x. What's nice is the left side is going to become that e to the 4x times y with a derivative. It's the product rule. Equals the right side, e to the 4x and e to the negative 4x subtract out to just being 1 times 2x. And so we just have 2x. And then we're ready to actually integrate both sides of this equation, dx, in order to solve. Well, the integral of the derivative on the left is just e to the 4x times y. On the right, the integral of 2x becomes x squared plus a constant. Now all we have to do to finish solving is divide by e to the 4x, or I prefer usually to multiply by e to the negative 4x on both sides. And y is equal to e to the negative 4x times x squared plus a constant. And we have our solution. 
This process feels a little weird at first. It takes practice to get good at it. So let's try and do a few more examples to get an idea of what's happening. Let's try x squared y prime plus xy equals x. This one you may notice is not in the correct order because there's an x squared in front of a y prime. So we have to get rid of it by dividing everything by x squared all the way across. When we do, we end up with the correct form, y prime plus 1 over xy is equal to 1 over x. Now we're ready to find our integrating factor by integrating the part that's in front of the y. The integral of 1 over x dx is equal to the natural log of x. Therefore, our integrating factor is e to the natural log of x, which is nice because that just simplifies down to x. So now that I have my integrating factor, we know what we're going to multiply both sides of my equation by x. What's nice is the left side is going to become that factor times y with a derivative is equal to, and this is really nice on the right side, it just comes out to 1. So now to finish it off, we can integrate both sides dx. And we end up with xy is equal to x plus a constant. And then finally, we can finish it off by dividing both sides by x. And we get 1 plus your constant divided by x is your solution. Let's try one last example before we wrap up here. Let's do x squared plus 1 times y prime plus 3xy equals 6x. We're not in the correct form until we divide by that x plus squared plus 1. So let's do that. Gives us 3x over x squared plus 1 times y equals 6x over x squared plus 1. We know we get our integrating factor from the part out in front of the y. So we're going to integrate 3x over x squared plus 1 dx. Let's see. If I make u equal to x squared plus 1, du is 2x dx. So I'm going to multiply by 3 halves by pulling pull 3 out. Multiply by 1 half and 2. That way I get the integral, 3 halves of the integral of 1 over u du, which means I have 3 halves times the natural log of u, which is really just x squared plus 1. And what's really nice about natural log is I can take that 3 halves and stick it inside as an exponent. So I actually have the natural log of x squared plus 1 to the 3 halves power. Remember, that's the exponent on e. So my integrating factor is e to the natural log of x squared plus 1 to the 3 halves power. And e to the natural log just gives me the stuff. And so my integrating factor is x squared plus 1 to the 3 halves power. So we're going to multiply both sides of this equation by our integrating factor, x squared plus 1 to the 3 halves, x squared plus 1 to the 3 halves. And that's going to give me my integrating factor times y, its derivative is the left side. On the right side, in the denominator, we've got one of these x squared plus 1. So if I subtract the exponents, on the right side, we've got uh, 6x and 3 halves minus 1 gives us x squared plus 1 to the 1 half power now. And now we can integrate both sides dx in order to solve. The integral of the derivative is just the stuff, x squared plus 1 to the 3 halves times y 
equals on the right side. We might need to use a substitution here. Integrating 6x times x squared plus 1 to the 1 half dx. If I make u equal to x squared plus 1, du is 2x dx. So I'm going to split that 6 into a 2 and a 3, bringing the 3 outside. 2x dx becomes du. So I have u to the 1 half, which gives me u to the 3 halves times 2 thirds with the 3 out front. And u is x squared plus 1. So we end up with 2 times x squared plus 1 to the 3 halves plus a constant. And all we need to do to get rid of the stuff in front of y is divide or multiply by x squared plus 1 to the negative 3 halves. Actually, dividing might work better on this one. Let's divide by x squared plus 1 to the 3 halves all the way across. And when we do, we get our final solution that y is equal to 2 plus, and I'll write this as a constant, times x squared plus 1 to the negative 3 halves power. And we've got our solution to the linear differential equation. While the steps might get a little ugly with the integration, the process is identical for every single problem. First, we get into the correct form. Integrate that p of x. Multiply both sides by e to the power of whatever your integral was, because that makes the left side the nice, convenient thing you're looking for. And then we can integrate and solve the resulting equation. These are really easy as soon as you get comfortable and familiar with the process. So practice, practice, practice is the next step. It's your turn to do so. Let me know if you have any questions.